Hello everyone. Let's get ready for the last video of the peony series. There might be some other peony sort of fun things, a different pattern and maybe some painting ones, but in terms of making that arrangement in the photo um, from the group site, this would be the one. Uh, we did our larger buds last time. And again, with those, I realized with this one, as I was doing it, I probably should have laced it. So I said lacing optional and you can, <clears throat> but this one was tight enough to hold it. I would put lacing, I would upgrade it to lacing recommended, by the way. Now, if you ever have it assembled and you want to lace after the fact, you can still pull them down and lace it up, you know, go in here. It's, it might be awkward, but it's possible. Up to you. Um, but I didn't think about that because I had made this one for the prototype and it was so tight that I definitely didn't need it. But this one was slightly looser. And so now I'm seeing like, hmm, maybe I wanted to lace it. When in doubt, probably go with the lacing. But now back to the matter at hand, which is the small bud. So the small bud, we're going to be using that little like kernel thing in the middle there that this one looks actually looks like an olive. It's olive green, you know, so any sort of, and, and if you make them more round, you can make a cherry, you can make whatever shape the heck you want to out of these, right? And I like them to be a little bit off because I want them to look like they're kind of un, getting ready to unfurl and they're not perfect. Um, so we're going to make this guy. So it's going to be the similar to what we did on the inside of this one, right? We got that right in there. Open her up. There it is. Boom. So we're going to make that. That time, the reason we started with this, um, the larger bud, is because, you know, then now you had the practice, and it obviously doesn't matter at all how it looks in there, um, because you're barely going to see it. See, this is kind of a looser bud. I'm glad, and this is a tighter bud, so that's going to look good in the arrangement. I kind of like the fact that this one's, like, on the verge of unfurling. And you can control that by how you squeeze it together. There, it's tighter now. But I want it to be a little unfurly. There we go. Okay, so let's pop those back up. Now, let's get on with our small bud. Let's move you guys out of the way. Okay, so this one's going to be a, a fast one, in theory, right? So we've got three little edge, sort of same size leaves as, you can make them smaller if you want to, as I put on to the large bud, I didn't realize that they were the same until later. I might scale them down a bit. And then we're going to do one of these guys. So let's start with that. So I'm going to use that light, lighter green, that khaki color that I had, the 399Z, I think it is, F399Z. Where'd you go? This guy here. So F399Z Matsuno. So that's a nice one, and I definitely use that a lot. Um, so we're going to try that. And we're going to start with a 3 8 inch basic frame. So... Let's I keep saying so today. What's up with that? I mean, I feel like I say it a lot anyway, but today seems extra sewy. Now, let's do about three eighths of an inch. And so that's going to be, in this case, uh, seven beads. Just in case I'm going to do the next one. But there's only two parts, right? We're just going to do two of those. And the key with these, again, is going to be to keep it extra um, cupped and to make sure you leave that top wire so that we can do that twist okay so let's get about an a inch of a twist on the bottom get that going down there you know something like that's good okay i got my top got a little bit loose on that twist if that happens that's okay not the end of the world stretch her out flatten and again i'm using that 26 gauge green paddle wire that i do so love okay and round bottom, round top. So again, and how many rows? That's a good question. 15 rows. So in my brain, again, how I used to always think about it before I ever opened one of those books is, uh, I'm thinking seven rows out from the center. So I'm going to hit this again. I want to round top, so I'm going to hit it right at that thing, always using that tension. Bringing it around. Okay, and I'm holding it. I'm always holding it on top to kind of keep things in line as I go. Now, again, with this one, we want it pretty cupped. So you want to always sort of err on the side of getting it to be too tight. Sometimes you might have to bring that bottom. I got a little 
problem with my nail there. I chopped through with the wire. Um, okay. Let me bring this back up. You might want to bring like one of the wires kind of over if it's almost too tight. See how I kind of bent this one to meet it? That's okay. Again, you're the boss of all of it. Of all of it. Might not feel that way sometimes, especially when the wire gets tangled or the beads spill. <sighs> I was working on another project with 15s earlier and the beads spilled. I just knocked them the heck over. Okay, so I'm going a little bit below here. And it, with this one, it's not like, just shape as you go, kind of hold it. I, I kind of hold it on my fingertip to use that as sort of a guide. Make sure I push this down so that it's really hitting straight across, keeping the beads tight. You want to go kind of under the previous row, but not completely. And then after the first or second go around, you also want to bend down your wires. I sometimes forget that to do that deliberately, and I just kind of do it as I go. But it's a good idea to kind of bend them down and get sort of that angle on them. Right, so that idea going. Okay, so then we're going to keep going. And using my fingertip underneath here, notice to kind of keeping this index fingertip under here to kind of shape that cup, kind of folding it so I can feel the edge of it underneath. Okay, so bringing that one around, wrapping. I always do this sort of lock-in wrap thing, push that down so that it's going straight across. And again, pull this, straighten as I go, and then kind of keeping that fingertip this fingertip under here is serving more of a purpose than just holding it. It's kind of keeping the tip so that I can kind of feel where I'm pushing it under, but not too far. So kind of shape it as you go. Again, pull these down. They tend to get flatter. Make a decision. Do I want to make a decision about, now? Eh, I'll keep it like that. This one's not going to be as cupped, and that's okay. So it looks like that so far. Again, bringing these down. Kicking down some more beads, straighten that wire as you go. And then kind of looking and seeing where I want it to be. Shape as you go. And I'm going, hmm, maybe that's not getting as cupped as I want it to be. No, that's okay. Remember, you're going to be able to shape the cupping later too, to some degree. You have to have something to shape, though. It can't be totally flat and make it cut. Well, maybe it can. Okay, so again, notice how I'm kind of shaping that row onto the previous row. Shaping it, seeing what's happening with it. So I only have one more pass. Oh, 15 rows, seven. I was going to do, about to do 11. I was like, that doesn't make sense. Okay, so I have a few more passes. Three more, to be precise. So I'm actually doing pretty pretty well here with the cupping. Again, kind of with me, the cupping is kind of about the shape, right? That what I want. I guess that's what it is for everyone. So, but I'm going to feel that as I go and kind of sculpt the beads. That's kind of how I like make patterns and designs is I kind of just start to go with it. <laughs> I guess I go with the shape and kind of make it do what I want it to do. After deciding, you know, what kind of structure I'm going to use, basic frame or continuous loops or something like that. Then I just kind of sculpt as I go. So I'm going to debate whether that's too loose. So I'll check it. I'll take one off and I'll see what I think. Better. Sometimes not better. That's where I want it to be. So again, this is the side view right now. So we have one, two, three, four, five rows. So I've got to go two more passes. So I'm going to go pull this one straight again. And then see where it meets up. See, too wide, right? Do you see that's too wide? Take one out. Might need to even take out two on this one. Hmm, debatable. Nope, good. So don't like lock it down and twist it, especially with this cupping or any time, until you kind of test it. Until you kind of figure out is that what I want it to look like? Is that where I want it to be? Okay, I'm pulling up some beads. Wrap them around my arm. And then ready to roll. Okay. One more again. Being very deliberate with this. Very checking, checking. 
looks like it would go right here, but I'm feeling that's up. See, too loose again, so I'm going to kick a bead out. That's okay. Check it. Feeling like that's good? Wrap her around. Okay, this is going to be my last pass around. So, one more time. Shaping. See, I'm shaping this side, pinching here to, like, kind of hold it where I would want it to be, where I want it to be. Figuring out where this one ends looks good. Okay. I make a lot of these little doodads. I don't know if they have an official name. I honestly don't, but um, I just use them for anything. Very early buds all the time. Okay, this shape with the two cupping. Now again, I'm gonna check this here. And that's borderline. I want it to be a little tighter than not because I'm gonna, there we go, that's what I'm looking for. So I can just check as you go. So I make sure that bottom twist is really tight. This is my side view now. And twist her up. <clears throat> Sorry, uh-oh, losing my voice again. And I don't really pay attention to how much I reduce things to. My default, like I've said before, is two. I'll leave this one at two. Twist up that end so it's good to go for next time. Do not cut off that top wire. I have done that before. Um, and it's not done then. It's just real hard. So I actually made two other ones um, because I was testing like how, like this one got really cupped at first and then was wider, which made it have sort of this odd profile because I started really cupped and then got less cupped, but you know, not the end of the world. And then this one was more consistent. Wasn't paying attention, not the end of the world, but I'm going to prefer to use this guy because they both have that sort of even profile to them. Looks like that, right? So I'm going to twist them together. Does not matter if you do them back to back, front to front, back to front, does not matter because you're going to twist them again after they get in their final place. So I'm going to twist these ends together. About a quarter of an inch down, chop those off. Okay. Now we're going to take these two ends like we did before. I do like to squash these still. You may or may not want, oh, how did I not? In the previous iteration of that, I did not chop that off. Um, up to you on the tamping thing. Personal thing, it doesn't matter. Up to you, try it. If you like it, don't. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. Um, there's that old commercial, remember, from the 70s. Sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes you don't. Well, I don't know how nutty this is, but sometimes you feel like doing the tamp down, sometimes you don't. Now I have that stuck in my head. Oh, goodness gracious. Okay, so we got this one. I'm going to look how I did this one. So how I did this one, I can see this is an old one, older one. I actually let the stem wire go up into it because I thought that sometimes I feel like that gives it a little more stability. So I actually put the stem wire up into the middle there between the two halves. I was going to give them some cute name, but then I was like, uh, halves works. Because um, we're just going to put them together like that. Right, And then once we get them strapped on, we're going to mush them so that we don't have that opening. So I'm going to use another 16 gauge, which you'd think by now I'd have ready for you guys, but no. Um, and just to keep it a little more manageable, let's chop off about six inches. I do save those little guys for minis. And where did my moss? There you go. Come on back. Getting a lot of use in this particular arrangement. My moss floral tape start a little bit down again go a little bit above bend it down and then wrap down let the wire do the work that should be the new thing not the boss of the wire let the wire do the work like spin it when you spin it let you know okay so let's do this thing again i'm using a lot of this zebra 30 gauge um, I like this one. It's a tough one to break, relatively speaking, for me. I do break it, though, but, you know, I've had a lot worse. So let's see if I can do that that way, that one where it goes up in the middle. I think for the other one, I did not do that. So this is an option. You can put the stem wire up into the middle, and then we're going to lace this. It makes it a, a little... I've never done this for 
uh, public consumption this way. Let's see. I might regret this. I might. In which case, then, you go back to how I said to do it in the first one. And, it's, again, you can do it that way anyway, where you wrap the two um, wires together, the two twisted wires together, and then attach it. Because maybe this whole extra stable thing is, you know, wishful thinking. So I wrapped that one on there. And so how do we shape these again? So I, this one's like this, too, where it goes in the middle, but I don't have any fissure. But you can see right there, I'm bending... This is another case of letting the wire and the beads do the work. Squish it together. Squish it. Bend this one in. I bend it in with my fingernail. Squish it in there. See? See how now it's, it's closed in? Close this one up. Let's look over here. Close this one up. I don't know if it feels any more stable than if I did it the other way, to be quite honest. Kind of just push everything together with your fingernail. Get a nice little bud shaped thing going on here and there we go there's our guy looking good i have to pause for just a moment because i think that the dogs are about to be barking a lot so now i normally like to do and i've done this before but then you end up with a lot of floral tape but i don't mind that i do a little wrap around before i do the leaves because i find it easier to get that right after the base of the um bud or whatever I'm doing if I don't have the leaves attached. I'm sure anyone would find that easier. So I'm going to go down a little bit, you know, just about maybe two, three inches. Chop that guy off. And now I'm going to attach these three leaves. Now, these three leaves are the same as before. I already had some made. Let me throw that into the bin. Um, so just about the same as before. Anything that's sort of like, you know, um, I did what? One, I did a three quarter inch basic frame, 13 rows. Actually, these aren't 13 rows. These are um, n nine rows and where did I put them? Nine rows and about, maybe I should look. I didn't write these down. That's funny. So I did nine rows, pointy with the extender bead. And they're, they're all about what? So we got a three quarter of an inch and then we have... A little bit like maybe a three five eighths of an inch and then another three quarter inch so something like that all around that size is fine you know so i'm gonna put the little small guy up at top stretch it out i lumped them together so now they're a little bit kinked up there let's get you out of the way mister so where'd you go and about you know what a half an inch below or something like that with this we want to be a little bit closer than we were with the previous buds and I'm going to strap them on there, get them ready to go, get them wired on. Bend it up to get it on there. Get your wire right up underneath it, nice and tight. Bring that one around. And then stick one, you know, about another half inch down below there. Not quite straight across. Sometimes they're a little bit, you know, they really want to be straight across. So... A little bit to the side. I mean, if it's straight across, not the end of the world. And, you know, maybe I'll go down a little bit deeper for the next one. Maybe, maybe three eight quarters of an inch. You know, put that one at the other, sort of in between the other two. Something like that. Get right on in there again. Nice and tight in there. And then I'm going to keep wrapping a little bit below. And, and I'm going to notice that I'm getting... a a little bit separated from my stem wire, so I'm just gonna tamp it down in there just to keep it, you know, as tight as possible. Again, optional. I'm gonna chop off some wire because I'm doing this under the camera while attached to the spool is not easy. Okay, so, as I, especially as I knock the camera over, let's not do that. Okay. So I'm just going to sort of go fast again. Let the wire do the work. You just kind of let it kind of do its thing. Do, 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 do. And I don't really need it anymore. So you can chop it off. You could have stopped it a long time ago. I was just having fun with it. I'll be honest. Okay. So there we go. Let's just tape her up and off we go. So 
I'm going to start underneath the previous one. I want to make sure I'm covering up all that green wire. So I'm going up a little bit. You can go up and over like I've done before. I don't really do that in the top one as much. Maybe I do. I just don't remember, but I don't feel like I do. I'm going underneath. Got a little bit going under. And again, optional. If you want to really kind of keep them stable, you can kind of go up over top again. Don't be scared of getting your stem wire kind of bunchy because you can smooth most of those bunches out. Okay, so I'm going under, down to the next one. Okay, I'm going to go up over the top again. Sometimes I forget to do that. I don't know if it even matters. Get, make sure you get down into that, though, right in there. Okay, so now, rolling it up. Let me pull out a little bit more floral tape. Let's see. Okay, so, let's, and then again, I, I switch over my hands so that I find it easier, you know, with the arthritis and everything to kind of find adaptive techniques, so. doesn't we can make sure it doesn't hurt as much as it doesn't I don't know how to say that sentence keep the pain to a minimum is what I'm trying to say so I mean it's gonna happen with this stuff come on now we're just spending all this time twisting but you got to find ways that work for you that make it less painful so I'm gonna chop it off right at the end now again I know I'm not gonna leave well, I don't know actually that's I already cut it to 12 inches but if I were gonna leave it this length you know I'm gonna go up a little bit past do that sort of fold down thing and then wrap it around like the sort of swaddling the end there like a sort of a burrito effect so that the bottom doesn't have a pointy end on it it doesn't normally have this little blob on it either but I got a little carried away okay so there we go I'm gonna bend it make it look cute I don't know if that's applicable but we're gonna try to and now we have all of our components and I think what I'm going to do is put them into a little mid-century modern vase like I had in the photo. And then maybe take a little spinny photo of it. So I'm going to pause for the moment and see if I can actually do that without disrupting the whole scenario here. And okay, here's the final. Actually, it's not final at all. We're in the new studio space. It's the best lighting in the house. <laughs> so I just wanted to show you what we got. Now, this is with two flowers, basically two of everything, because I made the prototypes, and then I made um, the ones that we did together, and with double the leaves, with a lot of foliage. So, got it on my old rickety turntable thing there. So you can kind of see where we were going and where we ended up. And while I did that, I mushed it. There we go, back in. And so there we go, in the new studio looking good over here getting in progress and I don't know why I'm moving since the turntable is moving that's kind of the whole point I'm trying to figure out the best lighting here okay so there we go get a lot of foliage in there I realized it's a pretty top heavy by the way arrangement with this many with this much stuff going on in it so I'm definitely not going to be using this even though it has a bigger base but um is definitely needs a more stable thing if it's going to go out in the world. If I were keeping it in my house, this would be okay. So there we go. And again, arranging the leaves so they kind of just droop, you know, and bend and kind of do random things, right? So that's what we're aiming for. And there we go. I can't wait to see what y'all come up with. I'm wondering if I'm going to add a few more blossoms. Probably. Why not? And, oh, there's the dog cruising around, checking out the new studio. He's kind of like the same color as the flooring, so it's like camouflage for him. There you go. Look, you're a YouTube star. Just kidding. Okay, he's pretty cute, though. He could be. So, anyhow, um, his name's Sylvester, but we call him Stinky. What are you eating, buddy? Anyhow, so there's our creation. Again, I would go with extra leaves. Up to you. And then when you put them in there, don't be scared to sort of bend the stems. See how I got the stems are kind of all wonky looking because I, because they're kind of in the mix, but I wanted them to have certain angles. So if you look closely, you can see that I'm kind of bending the stems in weird ways so that they kind of hold their shape. 
So, and they're in the mix in there, so that's okay. If you have enough stems, you're good. So anyhow, there you go. Thank you all so much for being my companions, my virtual companions as we, oops, I got that one smushed up, as we made our peonies. I think they came out pretty okay, and I've loved seeing the ones that y'all have been making yourselves. So have fun with it, as always, and I might do an extra one for scalloping and also for the painting, but that's the end of the journey on this particular arrangement. See y'all next time.